All right, guys, welcome to your lesson on transitions and animations in PowerPoint 2016. Uh, this presentation is going to be called Trivia Night, and uh, just like the title suggests, it's going to be pretty heavy on animations and transitions. So let's go ahead and click on tile number one here and look at your learning goal. It says that students will be able to use transitions and animations in combination with shapes and shape effects in PowerPoint 2016. Get. Uh, your objective is that students will be able to complete a Trivia Night PowerPoint presentation and apply animations and transitions to the presentation as well as troubleshoot slides with errors. All right, and if you click the next arrow, <clears throat> this is the video that you're currently, uh, this is a little introductory video actually, it's not the video you're currently watching, but this is kind of the setup video for animations and transitions and it goes over a lot of the things that you have to do in this particular project. <clears throat> This is going to be the practice presentation that you want to download and go ahead and open up in PowerPoint. All right, and once you uh, open up the PowerPoint, you're going to see that it's basically a partially assembled um, PowerPoint about space trivia and we're going to add to it we're going to add some more cate categories besides just space your powerpoint opens up go ahead and click on enable editing so that we can edit our presentation <clears throat> and let's go ahead and uh, look at our directions and go away, uh, so i'm going to minimize this real quick and let's go ahead and look at our actual directions here we go assignment directions um, it says, open the practice presentation, done. On slide two, select the text box that contains the answer, Neil Armstrong, and add a pulse animation from the emphasis group. All right. So when we're adding animations uh, to our presentation, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the actual answer box and we're going to go to the animation pane. All right, now notice how the question said add an anim animation from the emphasis category. So this is how it's broken up. You have entrance animations, emphasis animations, and then if you scroll down, you have exit and you have motion path animations. So it says it wants a fade, um, or no, a pulse. Is that what it said? A pulse from the emphasis, yeah. So there's pulse from the emphasis category. And if we look at our next set of directions here, our assignment directions now says, um, uh, in the same text box, add a wipe animation from the entrance group and then change the effect option so that it wipes from the left. All right, so here we go. If we're gonna do that, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to click on add animation because we already have one animation on this thing. So we don't want to just put another one on top of it. It'll just replace one animation with the other unless we go to add animation. And then it says it wants a uh, fade animation entrance just like that. Okay. Um, so now it says reorder the animation <clears throat> so that the white animation happens first. All right. So I'm going to open up what's called my animation pane because now I have two animations going on here and I want to be able to tell what's going on first and what's going on second. So if I hover my mouse over this, you can see that this is my on-click emphasis animation of pulse and this is my on-click entrance animation called fade. All right, and it wants the fade to come in first. So boom, I'm just going to click and drag. You can also say move earlier, move later, right up here in the timings pane. All right, and now let's look at our directions again. It says, um, change the start options for the pulse animation so that it starts after previous. All right. So we're going to look at the pulse animation, <clears throat> which is the second one. And instead of starting on a click, which is what it's going to do right now, which means both animations would have to come in on a click, I'm going to change this one to after previous. So now if I play the slide, there's slide number one. I'm going to click one time and my answer will come in and the pulse will come in right after it. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what I want to happen. All right. Now, 
it says use the animation painter to copy your animations to the answer on slide three to the mercury text box answer on slide three so this is kind of cool um I don't have to, I don't want to have to keep redoing this thing, you know, and having to put the same animations on the answer in the, my trivia night. So I can use what's called my animation painter, which is really cool. So I'm going to click on my text box. I'm going to click on this thing right here in my advanced animation group called my animation painter. I'm going to click on slide three, and then I'm just going to click on the word mercury. And you'll see that it gets the same animation in the same order. And my on click and after previous is copied over to it as well. It's the quickest way to do stuff, um, to add an animation, especially if you're doing the same thing over and over and over. And I always say the quickest way is always the best way. All right, so it says remove the animations from the text box on slide three containing what planet is closest to the sun. So on slide three, this, the question itself, has a couple animations on it that I don't want. So I'm just going to click on them and press delete. Click on it and then press delete. All right, so now if I click on this thing in my animation pane, nothing is highlighted. If I click on my answer, you can kind of see what's highlighted here. And then I also have an animation on my planet Mercury. And if you play the slide, you'll see it. It's kind of cool. Boom. Just like that. And if I click, the answer will come in with my pulse. <clears throat> All right, that slide's done. Um, slides four and five have an error occurring in them. Evaluate these slides and fix the error. All right. Um, that's going to be up to you. Delete slide six. Um, you guys can evaluate the slides yourself and figure out what the error, error is. I'm just going to right click here on slide six and say delete slide. Okay, that's done. Add a new slide and apply the background format from the previous slide. This is a challenge. Can you figure this out? Okay, this is kind of cool. I'm going to add a new slide here. And you can see that it does have a cool background, but it's not this like constellation-y kind of background. And I would like that to happen here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do something here under the design tab, hint, 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 um, that's going to apply this constellation background into my new slide. And you have, to, it's just kind of a challenge, so you have to figure this out yourself. All right. And now you can see that I have my constellation -y background in slide six, and hopefully you're able to make that happen as well. That's part of the challenge here. It says copy the number on the left-hand side um, of slide four and paste it into your new slides. Add, add text, box, text boxes with questions and answers that would fit into the space category. So this is kind of like um, you do-it-yourself slide. So you come up with a question and an answer, and you're going to add a shape here, and you're going to try to make it happen. Um, so I'm just going to copy this number, control C on your keyboard, and I'm going to click on slide six and say control V. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the number here because this is technically going to be question number five now in my trivia night. So I have three, four, and five here. I'm also going to probably, no, I'll keep that. I'll keep everything else the same. I'm going to insert a um, text box here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and copy this answer box, control C again, come into my uh, new slide, control V, and I'm just going to backspace where it says answer. And now if I open up my animation pane, I should have also copied the animations for this thing. So let's just go ahead and see. It should come in on a click. Uh, I think I have to paint the animation still on this thing. Okay. I do. Because I only have it on this one. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on my animation here, animation painter. Go ahead and click on the word Saturn there. And that was part of the challenge there. Animation painter. There. And now I have my animations on my answer in slide five. And I have to come up with a question. I'm going to come up with a question kind of probably about Mars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use shapes in order to go ahead and make my representation of Mars here. It's the red planet. So I'm going to make sure it's nice and red. I'm going to go ahead and do a um, shape effect of a glow to the outside of it um, to make it look a little celestial. I'm going to do an animation on this thing. I'm going to spin it. Um, with an emphasis. See, that's kind of cool. 
and I'm going to go in here to my animation pane, and I'm going to go into what's called um, effect options. And you can do this too with the planets that you're going to create out of shapes. Um, you're going to go to animation timings, and I'm going to say I want, it, I want it to repeat until the end of the slide, and under effect, I'm going to say auto reverse. Um, and I'm going to say OK. Now if I play my slide, my answer comes in, and I do have to click for my animation to start on my planet. Okay, that's kind of cool about right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change my timing on my animation to happen with previous so that when my answer comes in with a click, my planet should also start spinning. Just like that. Okay. Um, I also kind of want it, to <clears throat> I don't want to give away the answer, so I'm also going to change my animation timing and I'm going to say add animation and I'm going to say that I want it to fade in. And I'm going to say that I want that to happen with previous. I'm going to reorder that. So now, let's see here. So if I, the question will come in first, click, answer comes in, and then the planet comes in as well and starts spinning. All right. So again, your animation pane is really important if you're going to get crazy with animations. Um, what I'm going to have you guys do next here, and I'm going to kind of go off the directions a little bit, but make sure you guys follow the directions here. I'm going to go ahead and right click here, and I'm going to create what's called a section. And um, I'm going to rename the section History. All right, and I'm going to come up with two slides, kind of like, <clears throat> yeah, we got it. Kind of like the space category here. I'm going to come up with a cool background, and I'm going to add two slides here having to do with history. And of course, I'm going to change the background to probably a, uh, a map or something kind of that um, theme. I'm going to go ahead and click up here too, um, before here, and I'm going to say rename section right above slide one. And, and insert a section and then rename it. I'm going to call this one space. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sections are just a good way to kind of divide your presentation, um, especially if you have a big, long presentation like we're going to have. I'm also going to go ahead and click here, and I'm going to say... Um, add section. This one's going to be called technology. And this is all in your directions. I'm just trying to fast track this because I don't want a huge long video again. I'm going to say two new slides here. And then I have one more select section I'm going to add here. And this is going to be a, a student choice. But for me, I'm going to say music trivia. Um, and I'm going to throw in a couple of cool slides about some of my favorite bands or something like that. And, um, you should have a total of 12 slides all together for this presentation. Now, each section is going to be a little bit different, right? So I'm going to go ahead and format this background with you guys and do the history slide with you guys and call it a day. And you guys can do the technology slides because you kind of get the idea after this, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go to the design tab. I'm going to say format background because I want to use a picture for my background. I'm going to go ahead and say file. I have to go ahead and find a picture first, though. Hang on. Um, so I googled map background here, and I think this is the last one that I used in my last video, and it kind of worked really well, too, so I'm going to use it again. I'm going to say File, Save As, um, Save Image As. I'm just going to put this on my desktop real quick. And whatever, it's called 2108, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to go back to my presentation. I'm going to go ahead and say Format Background with a File. Come up here to desktop, boom, open. Insert. Just like that. <clears throat> now, tricky, check this out. I want this background to happen in slide number eight as well, but I don't want to have to keep going back and forth um, and saying insert file, insert file, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this slide. This is cool. Check this out. This is called your Format Painter. Click on your Format Painter, and then just click on Slide 8. And now I've got I've painted the background into Slide 8. Format Painter will paint any kind of formatting, whether it's the background of a slide, or text, or anything like that. <clears throat> it's just like your Animation Painter. It copies whatever you click on, and paints it into your new presentation. Alright, and you're going to do the same thing for technology. You're going to find some cool backgrounds for technology, and go ahead and plug those in. Same thing for your... Um, section. All in all, you should have a cool presentation with animations and transitions for 12 different slides here that I can kind of click through. Make sure your answers don't come in 
uh, before the question's over. Make sure the answers come in on click so you can kind of control that and make sure the picture doesn't give away the answer. Um, other than that, guys, have fun with this one.